What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Been a minute. Today we're going to be talking about the changes that are going to be coming or some of the changes that are going to be coming to CBT3. Um, for those of you guys who had the opportunity to hang out with me on the stream, shouts out to my boy Heaven. Um, he was able to translate all the important stuff for us and get us everything. Uh, there's a bunch of photos and everything that's popping up all over the place about the new content and potential things. So I'm going to be breaking down all the new content. You guys will actually be able to see the video footage of the new character and the new features that are in the game you'll also be able to see some of the new bosses in action and i'll also be mentioning some things that uh, if you guys were not in the beta will specifically pertain to you they've added a lot of quality of life features so make sure you strap in buckle your safety belt uh, we're going to be talking about quite a few things that are going to be visiting us here when we get the beta here in a few weeks now for those of you guys who are wondering why china is getting their beta before we are um, in terms of everybody else in the world um, it's because that uh, for the chinese closed beta test three they're not going to be doing ps4 however we are and then of course we have to wait for ps4 sony for approval and all that stuff and then once that rolls out then we'll be able to go live as well so i'll be keeping close tabs on anything that's going to be happening as well so i will let you guys know when i get updates so what we're going to be talking about first here guys is a they've adjusted uh the energy system Okay, so it looks like I don't know if this is going to make it to, you know, global side, uh, but the big thing here is they have adjusted uh, the currency system because before uh, we had stamina, uh, basically, well, not stamina, stamina is that bar that you guys see that you use for sprinting, climbing, swimming, stuff like that. And then you also had an energy system. So we had an energy system that we used to enter dungeons, and then we also had a moon system that you would use to loot world items, right? So after you kill a world boss, you'd open a plant, you get loot, etc. Now, there was this other thing that we had to do when you're powering up your characters, you had to collect these materials from dungeons uh, in order to, you know, raise your level cap and, you know, advance your character, so on and so forth. What they decided to do is, as you guys saw the little yellow flower on the screen, is they added these new flowers that you can loot that are scattered throughout the open world. And then now what you're going to be able to do is actually be able to get that loot in the open world. So they took it out of the basically the energy dungeon gated system and they, they increased the amount of currency. Uh, that we're able to use to, to loot open world items. So the big thing here, guys, is when you pay attention to this, is now um, you have moons. And before, in the closed beta 2, we only had four moons uh, per day, and they had a certain amount of refreshes, but they upped that amount to 120. Now, I'm not for certain, you know, how much each of these, you know, are going to take to open, what changes they've made to the world boss system. But I think overall, this is a great change because what this does is it takes away some of the constraints because this was one of my concerns when we play closed beta 2 is if uh, is how they were going to gate the content and now that they've added this to an open world platform what that means for you is that it's going to be a lot easier to build characters because before since it was gated especially within a limited time frame you found yourself waiting for specific days or specific moments or trying to farm key things to get these items but now that you can just grab them in the open world it really gives you a lot more flexibility uh, to build the characters that you want all in all i think this new open world challenge system is going to be really cool and you guys can find these uh these little markers on your map that will let you know exactly where to find these individual challenges so you guys can get the loot and we'll talk more about this when we get hands-on in the beta now the next thing we're going to be talking about is this character her name is Ningguang uh, apologies if I'm saying this completely wrong. You guys can see another yellow flower down there. Uh, but Ningguang was a character that a lot of people thought were cool. A lot of people were really attracted to her her design and her aesthetics. But I'm going to be honest with you. She fell really short and she kind of missed the mark um, in CBT2. So she wasn't as popular as, of a character. Her concepts, her initial concepts and the ideas behind her kit were really awesome. Um, but they didn't really execute that well. But now, MiHoYo has taken steps to really, really enhance uh, a Geo characters as a whole. So now, within within the closed beta test three and. I'm assuming the future uh, geo characters are going to be really really effective and I'll explain to you guys why after we talk about Ning Wong's buff so Ning Wong now when she uses a basic attack will generate these orbs that you guys can see floating around her back and then now while she's using these orbs when she utilizes a charge attack it'll consume all of the orbs that she's generated behind her and I'm assuming will increase her combat power now the beautiful thing about this is since it's enhancing her power while using the charge attacks uh, for those of you guys who didn't play in closed beta 2 how her her ultimate works when she puts up this wall that blocks all projectiles that you know would 
otherwise pass through it is that wall actually amplifies her power even more and you guys can see that now the big thing here is with geo heroes they've introduced this new feature to the game where it's really going to make you want to use geo heroes because in closed beta test 2 uh, geo heroes were kind of eh, whatever you know use them don't use them it's kind of up to you but now they've created this system to where once you've inflicted any type of element so you guys saw there that we inflicted lightning with razor or that we've inflicted you know fire with the luke once you inflict an enemy with a elemental affliction you guys see now that ningguang has a lightning shield on her when you afflict an enemy with an elemental affliction so let's say you use that lightning element um and you hit an enemy and now they're shocked right and now you switch to ningguang or any geo hero that comes out in the future and use the geo attack what it's going to cause the enemy to do is drop an elemental shard now that elemental shard will match whatever element that you inflicted that enemy with and then what happens is now that you have that shield your character is now immune uh, to that particular type of element this is going to be really really useful in those difficult abyss floors for those of you guys who haven't done abyss it's basically your you know typical floor tiered content except it's a hell of a lot harder and when you run into situations i think this is going to be really good for future content especially when we start getting into any game dungeons and things like that because when we go against those pesky bosses um, that literally obliterate your team with a specific element this can be very very helpful um, in keeping your team alive and i think this is going to scale very well with future content as we get into some other content, uh, this is a character, La Senora, um, who is known as the 8th highest ranking in the Fatui. So for those of you guys who didn't play the closed beta, the Fatui is kind of like the secret organization that you guys will learn about in the story. And La Senora is actually a very high ranking official um, that we don't know if she's going to be a boss, whether she's going to be a playable character or not. And this photograph you guys will see in Child, who was introduced in part of the story that you guys will find out. I don't want to spoil it for you, but he was a bow user and a dual dagger user that might come into play a little later definitely could be playable as well now something that you guys might be excited about there's a rumor floating around that this guy here might be the geo god because uh, as you guys know uh, i just can't mention it there's another character in the game that's actually recruitable that is a god i'll let you guys find out who on your own but this guy there's a rumor going around that he might be the geo god and as you guys learn more about the story you know, we'll find out. Maybe he's just a playable character. Who knows? But they made it a point to showcase this picture in the stream, and we have no idea what role this guy plays. Now, this brings us to the next topic of conversation in the stream, uh, where they introduced the new hero, Chong Yoon. Uh, he's going to be coming. You guys can see this. They showed some of his emotes and what he does in game. He's going to be an ice uh, claymore user, so two handed sword. He's going to bring some pretty interesting mechanics to the combat situation when you guys are going to be using them. His design, I think, looks completely amazing, but you guys can see him close up. You guys can see the aesthetics overall are just absolutely insane. Uh, so you guys can definitely rely on this when you guys are trying to uh, decide which character you're going to pick. Now, as we get into his basic attack animations, you guys can see this here. I wanted to make sure that you guys saw this. So if you guys are trying to decide if you wanted to pull for this character, especially since he is a two-hand sword user, uh, he's He's going to be really really effective against shielded enemies which you guys will run into quite a bit of and if you guys don't have a fire hero to burn the wooden shields uh, or a heavy weapon user uh, this is a character that you guys definitely can look at uh, or look into building if you guys like this character's design now here you guys are seeing a skill too where he brings up this ice crystal and puts this frost aura around I don't know how it affects enemies just yet, but apparently it what it does do is it, it gives a buff, an attack buff to melee type characters. So you can use this to stack on top of your other melee damage dealing characters uh, to give them some increased damage. Again, I don't know if this frost aura is going to influence enemies at all, maybe like movement speed reduction or anything like that, or maybe it's upgradable to that you know nature, but we'll just have to kind of wait and see. If you guys haven't seen his ultimate attack yet, here it is, and it just looks absolutely insane. I can't wait to see what kind of effects it inflicts on the enemy. I, heck, I'm watching it with you guys again right now. Uh, but this was the showcase for Chung Yoon. Uh, if you guys were curious as to what he looked like and how his actions were performed in combat. Now, as we get into the harder content in the game, for those of you guys who, uh, you know, maybe never have played Genshin Impact, uh, the big thing here, guys, is we're looking at the Abyss content. Now, for a closed beta test 2, Abyss content was easily the hardest content in the game in comparison to all the bosses. This is where you're going to get the good loot. This is where you're going to probably pull your hairs out in frustration, because if you make a mistake... 
you're probably going to die. Now they've introduced a new feature in the abyss where every month they're going to be giving your team a buff that's going to help you clear abyss. This month it happens to be every time you dash, it causes an explosion. We don't know how much damage that that's going to inflict just yet, but every single month it is going to change. Now for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the abyss, it's basically tiered content. You go through floors, you get a bunch of rewards. Um, and like I said, the difficulty scales uh, in the beginning, you only need one team of four people to go through. As you get higher, uh, you'll, you'll need more than one team so two teams of four three teams of four maybe uh, and we'll find out how that's going to scale as they release more content but the way that it's set up it looks like something that could potentially go on forever now for all my Klee fans what you guys are looking at here is a new animation for Klee um, Klee is definitely a crowd favorite character for those of you guys who uh, were wondering what they were doing with their skill three they gave Klee a new animation so you guys can definitely 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 fanboy out or fangirl out uh, for one of the most popular characters characters in Genshin Impact. Now, I'm sure you guys are also curious about the summon system. Uh, for those of you guys who weren't in the closed beta test two, we'll talk about that in here in a minute because there were some improvements to the summon system, which we'll talk about here in a bit. But before we get into that, I do want to mention that there are new enemies added to the game. I know there were a lot of talks in CBT2 and people were wondering if Genshin Impact or MiHoYo were going to add new enemies. There are new enemies and these new enemies have new skills and old enemies also have new skills. Which you guys will be able to see here shortly when you see this ice cage that came up out of the ground that was cast by a mage. With that being said, I want you guys to really keep an eye out because some of the old enemies that you guys are used to fighting might not have the same mechanics or they might have very different mechanics that could cost you a match. Especially if you guys are doing higher floors in the abyss. That's something you definitely, definitely, definitely want to pay attention to. Now, for those of you guys who wanted harder content and new bosses, this is a little short snippet of a new boss that's going to be introduced in closed beta test 3. Uh, there's already screenshots of this guy popping up all over the place, uh, but you guys can definitely, definitely see that he has some interesting mechanics. Um, he definitely just blows up the screen and shoots stuff all over the place. And I think this is going to be a good place to really test out the new mechanics of like the Geo heroes. As I mentioned before, now Geo uh, playing with Geo heroes and inflicting enemies with specific elements will allow you to then attack with the Geo hero and get you like an element uh, neutrality shield, basically, well, immunity shield, I should say uh, that's going to allow you to take advantage of sticky situations that you would otherwise be in uh, i don't know if that's going to apply here since he's a geo hero i don't know if you're going to be able to inflict him with geo effects uh, but if they happen to have other bosses or bosses that look similar to this boss but different elements that's something that i would invite you guys to really really think about and really really implement in your strategy when you guys are tackling some of the new content that is coming to genshin impact now you guys are probably like well d what new content are you talking about well the new content that i'm talking talking about guys is for those of you guys who played in CBT2 you guys understood that as you guys were going through the story quest there were some pretty significant gaps in between you really didn't know what the heck was going on um, a lot of times because the content wasn't fully fleshed out so I'm happy to announce that they're adding more quests in the storyline just for Mondstadt which is the first region that came out and they're also adding uh, or extending the quest in Liyue which is the second region unfortunately there are no talks of adding the third region just yet um, but they are adding a ton of more quests that you'll be able to do uh, so you'll be able to find out different things about the characters and you know different stories so for those of you guys who didn't play in the closed beta at all understand that there are side quests where you can learn about specific characters like lisa deluke you know so on and so forth and then you know there'll be some extensions and as they release more content you'll be able to do more quests along those chains with those characters so you guys can definitely, definitely, definitely expect to see more content um, in closed beta three. Uh, so there'll be more story quests, more things to discover, more adventure XP to get for my for my peeps out there that are trying to go, get as high of an adventure rank as you possibly can in the next beta. That's definitely something that you guys can look forward to. Now, as we get into the summon system, guys, the, the, like I said, there's some huge quality of life changes for the summoning system. So before they used to run one five-star hero and one four-star hero, but now they're doing it to where now it's a five-star in the banner, plus three four-star heroes. So you guys can see on the side, those are three of the most powerful four-star heroes in the game, in my opinion. Um, you know, you guys might think there are some other ones that are stronger than them, but honestly, those three are some really strong four-star heroes and they're coupled with a five-star. So now when you guys summon for the rate up, you'll have a rate up on all of these heroes. 
Now, over the course of this video, if you guys want to watch this full video, you guys can go check out the stream. But they did 100 pulls here, which is basically 10 10 pulls. And with 10 10 pulls, they ended up pulling two five stars, okay? And they max imprinted two heroes. So what I mean by that is in this game, they have this thing called Constellations. And with these constellations, uh, when you're summoning for heroes, if you pull a dupe, you'll get this item that allows you to advance their constellation. And when you advance their constellation, it increases their abilities, right? Or it increases the power of their abilities. So for like Singh, uh, the guy with the blue here, um, when you imprint his abilities, uh, he has these floating swords, right? And when you imprint them, it changes the amount of swords, right? And the amount of damage that they deal. Uh, for this other character in the game, Amber, uh, she has a charge shot that shoots one shot when she gets an imprint it turns into like a double shot and you have to get a total of like five uh, duplicate heroes in order to max power your hero so now with this new system what it's going to allow you to do and again they they did literally 10 temples so 100 summons and they literally maxed like two or uh, two and a half characters and got two five star pulls which is pretty insane so it looks like the rates are going to be actually really really good and so for those of you guys who are trying to max out your favorite characters this is a tremendous opportunity for you to do so and i think the new structure with the banner as they ramp up and they get ready to uh gear up for release is really going to to make a lot of players excited because i think uh, one of the big drawbacks especially with the gash game that relies on imprints as i I feel like a lot of players who maybe weren't spending money or weren't trying to summon a lot uh, would have felt like they were left in the dust but with the new system like i think it's going to be easier than than ever to imprint your characters and max out the constellations so you can see your characters at their full potential so now what we're going to do guys is with the rest of this is uh <laughs> you guys can watch these summons as we do them i want to talk about the last big feature that was added to the game and what this is going to be is matchmaking so I get this question a lot. People are like, D, is there co-op in this game? Is it a single player? And I'm like, yes, you can play with up to four players. And how the dungeon system works is it's basically an average level of everybody in your party, right? So if you're level 80, if you have one level 80 character, you have one level 80 character, right? Then your average, if you add them two together, is 80, right? But let's say you had one level 80 character and you were trying to do like a level 90 dungeon or something like that or a level 85 dungeon and you need some help. Now you can use the matchmaking system to queue up with other people who are trying to do the same dungeon and it'll make it easier for you to find parties uh, to find other people to play with so that way you don't have to spend more time trying to level up all your characters just so you can get into a dungeon. I think this is going to be a tremendous feature that's going to be really good for the longevity of the game overall uh, just because as they release harder content more difficult dungeons you're going to want to get into the dungeons as fast as you can and you might or might not necessarily have people that you play with consistently but now with the new matchmaking system you're going to be able to get in and play as much as you want uh, when you know trying to get into the dungeon systems so all in all guys i think like a lot of the changes with the new content the adjustments to the summoning system also the new summoning animations are going to be really really incredible and it's a nice thing because what this means for genshin impact guys is that they actually listen to the community when the community said hey you know you guys might want to fix this because at the end of the game it feels like there's not really much to do um they literally revamped like the whole dungeon system and how you can find like different materials they made it easier for us to build characters easier easier for us to summon characters they buff heroes that were kind of inconsequential uh before poor kaya kaya still didn't get any love uh but there's been a lot of changes and it looks like a lot of hints to things that are going to be coming new bosses new playable characters uh new things that might just happen to pop up in the middle of the beta and if i find out any information about any of these things popping up because i will be keeping close tabs on the chinese beta that starts tomorrow basically in about 20 hours uh, i'll keep close tabs on it to see if there's going to be any updates that's going to be happening so i can let you guys know anything uh that comes up with that being said guys i just wanted to thank you guys for taking the time to check out this video i just wanted to take an opportunity to showcase this so you guys can see this you know in video format instead of like you know just looking at portraits so you guys can actually see the new boss in action see the new character in action see all the new stuff that's going to be coming uh, you know with the new quests and all that jazz and the extended storyline and all that so you guys can see that um i will be covering everything that happens so listen if genshin impact blinks i'll know 
<laughs> but if you guys want to see the full stream and see the reactions that I had uh, when it was like super spontaneous because I hadn't seen any of this before, you guys can definitely check out the stream footage. I'll post a link to that at the end of this video so you guys can definitely check that out as well. But again, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy Damone, and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.